Hi YouTube, Darth here. This is Yes or No, a weapon review series where I give a clear and concise answer as to what weapons you should be using in Battlefield 4. I'm back with another highly requested weapon, the AN-94 Assault Rifle. Somewhat of a technological curiosity, the AN-94 fires two bullets in quick succession with little or no recoil. The real-life counterpart was designed with this feature in order to defeat sophisticated body armor. But how does the AN-94 perform in Battlefield 4? Is this a weapon you should be using, yes or no? Yes, but with some major exceptions. The AN-94 is not a typical battlefield assault rifle as it fills in more of the role of a hybrid DMR and assault rifle combination. If you try to treat it like an M416, you're going to find that it is exceptionally disappointing. But if you can be patient and control your surroundings, you stand a fair shot with the AN-94. Let's talk about what the AN-94 provides. The AN-94 is the best selective fire headshot weapon in the game. A one burst headshot at less than 20 meters is guaranteed to drop a target on normal. In fact, I think DICE updated the headshot multiplier for assault rifles just to accommodate this weapon. While I tend to not prefer headshots, you might find that this is exactly why you would want to use this weapon. For me, it's an extra perk. The AN-94 has the second least combined recoil among the assault rifles at 0.32 degrees up, 0.1 left, and 0.12 right. This puts it just behind the SAR-21 in terms of recoil, even though the first shot recoil multiplier of the AN-94 is quite a bit more hefty at 2.1 times. Even in fully automatic mode, the AN-94 is one of the easiest assault rifles in the game to maintain on your target. Complementing that ease of control is the accuracy of the weapon. Its spread increase per shot is only 0.078 degrees and its spread decrease per second is 17.3 degrees, meaning it doesn't balloon quickly and can quickly reset between measured bursts. And while keeping shots on moving targets can be somewhat tricky if you burst unevenly, the AN-94 has a middling bullet velocity of 620 meters per second, so bullets do not lag much behind moving targets. This means that the AN-94 is all about accuracy. As I said, the AN-94 is essentially the hybrid of a DMR and the assault rifles. It outclasses DMRs in the under 35 meter range and is generally on par with DMRs in the long range game. You'd be hard pressed to make a case for using DMRs when you have the AN-94 available and it carved itself even more of a niche in Battlefield 3 when DMRs were recon only. But it's not all great with the AN-94 and the AN-94 has serious drawbacks that I'll talk about now. The damage output of the AN-94 is actually pretty abysmal. On average, it performs roughly equivalent to the SAR-21 with a minimum time to kill of 402 milliseconds. This is much ado to the normal assault rifle damage model combined with its low rate of fire of 600 rounds per minute. Though the two bullet bursts do exit the chamber at 1200 rounds per minute, the best you can hope to achieve with perfect burst timing is about 700 rounds per minute. This lets you achieve a slightly better time to kill of around 356 milliseconds, but fire out of cadence for too long and you're likely to jam. This is a problem with all burst fire weapons in Battlefield 3 and 4, the jamming mechanic. This happens when you fire faster than the cadence that the weapon expects. I find it's particularly easy to achieve on the AN-94 as the limits of this weapon seem to be far more restrictive than the M16A4 and M4. Panic too much in close quarters and this weapon is going to make sure you die frustrated and angry. In fact, this happens so frequently that I almost gave the AN-94 a no vote because of it. It's really bad on this weapon, but there are ways to mitigate the problem. At 2.4 seconds for the round and chamber reload and 3.5 seconds for the empty reload, this is definitely not a weapon with which to mag dump. Its already poor performance in CQB combined with the long reload times make it lag behind other assault rifles quite a bit. This is really where the hybrid nature of this weapon makes itself known, as in-your-face assault players like myself are going to run into a lot of hardship in CQB swarm situations. So it's not great at CQB, but can hang in there if you're trained at landing headshots or are quick about hipfire. I found the AN-94 would frustrate me quite a bit when I was pressured, but if I could keep my enemies at bay enough for reload time and burst jamming to not rear their ugly heads, the AN-94 was a stellar shooter. Let's look at some numbers to see why it stacks up so well. The first thing I did was to run the back of the box numbers against three other accurate assault rifles, the M416, the AR160, and the SAR21. The AN-94 fares pretty well against all of them beyond 25 meters, but isn't great in the short game. That pretty much aligns with my own experiences. But what about if you're able to keep and hold the weapon at 700 rounds per minute? The AN-94 gets a lot better. This is suggestive of its maximum performance in the hands of a very well-trained Battlefield player that uses the weapon all the time. 
probably not what you're going to get if you start playing with this weapon tomorrow, and really only the performance I was able to achieve with a macro on the test range. Now for one last test, I wanted to look at how the AN94 does against two pretty good DMRs, the SKS and the SCAR HSV. The AN94 stays competitive with those weapons in the under 35 game, and the SCAR HSV becomes superior beyond 35 or so meters. Again, if you can manage perfect burst control, the AN94 looks a lot better and pushes that point of parity with the DMRs out to about 45 meters. And control is really what it comes down to with the AN94, so let's talk about that next. There's really only one way to run this weapon, but I'm going to show you both patterns of behavior. First, I'll start with fully automatic. The AN94 has a recoil pattern of 0.32 up, 0.1 left, and 0.12 right. With a first shot recoil multiplier of 2.1, this is going to take the weapon slightly up and to the right with some modest bloom from the spread increase per shot of 0 0.078 degrees per shot. If you set this weapon to burst fire only, like you should be, you're going to see a spray pattern that is almost completely vertical. The only thing that keeps it moving upwards is the heavy kick from that first shot recoil multiplier. In either of these cases, to counter the recoil pattern of the weapon, you'll want to pull primarily down and ever so slightly to the left. Honestly, just pulling straight down will get you most of the way there on automatic fire regardless. For burst fire, you're going to have to carefully figure out how much your gun is fighting versus your cadence, which is why jamming can be a problem as you can easily overcompensate. Optionally, you can also just wait for your weapon to reset to center after each shot, but this is going to bleed off a lot of valuable time. I don't generally recommend doing this unless your target is completely unaware and or stupid. Ideally, you're using this weapon on maps where you might normally use a DMR. The first thing you should do whenever you're using the AN94 is to set the weapon to burst fire mode. This is going to let you take advantage of the best attributes of the weapon, its ability to land one volley headshot kill shots. If you're like me or aren't particularly accustomed to this weapon, don't expect to just start landing every shot as a headshot. Instead, you're going to have to take a somewhat more conservative approach with this weapon. With the AN94, positioning is absolutely critical as you have to control your engagements. The gun is weak when you don't know your enemy's positions and when you have to draw in a surprise. It's at its strongest when you're in cover, can firmly plant your feet to avoid side strafing and keep enemies at a distance. Panic fire is your number one enemy as your weapon is prone to jamming and it's especially slow killing in close quarters engagements. When firing, keep in mind that each of your kill shots should come in three burst sets. At every range, you'll need 5-6 to six bullets to kill an enemy. Because the AN94 fires 2 bullets at a time per burst, you'll therefore need 3 sets of bursts. And this way, it's exactly like most DMRs. As a hybrid weapon, part DMR, part assault rifle, it has some power to push, but not a lot. If you find yourself fighting more than a single enemy, you're going to be in hot water pretty quick. Hip firing the AN94 will gain you a bit of initiative and time to draw, but if your enemy is already shooting, then you've already lost. Alternatively, you could opt to do your close quarters pushes with a strong CQB weapon like the G18. Again, this is one of those times where the more awareness you can have of your surroundings, the better the AN94 is going to perform. As long as you keep the initiative in any engagement, the AN94 is not going to let you down all that often. But as soon as you get pressured or pressed, it's probably all over. I actually ended up trying three different sets of attachments for the AN94 before I landed on my preferred setup. There wasn't much help to be found from my usual recon work of the top players, as they all had somewhat different preferences. I found the biggest confluence of players around the heavy barrel and stubby combination, which I think might be the best for pure accuracy on this weapon. However, I ran with something slightly different. My philosophy on this weapon was to enhance its ranged performance. To that end, for my optic I ended up preferring the PKA 3.4x magnification scope. This is a much higher scope than I usually recommend on my assault rifles. I found it actually quite useful with the rest of my setup, although I did also use the PKA-S 1x magnification when I ran the heavy barrel stubby combination. I chose the PKA for two reasons. First, I wanted a relatively higher magnification to play to this weapon's strong mid and long range power, and secondly it's a Russian scope. For my accessory, I went with the laser sight. Sometimes I ran red, sometimes I ran green. Because the medium magnification scopes actually do have relatively significant draw to sight's times, hip firing is a major benefit. A laser here only makes sense. As for the barrel attachment, the heavy barrel was my choice across every variation of this weapon that I ran. The low rate of fire combined with its accuracy makes the heavy barrel a great pairing for the AN94. 
I don't find the weapon particularly difficult to control either, so the heavy barrel's usual detraction of increased upwards recoil doesn't factor in too much here. Even when I was running with the ergo grip on the AN-94, I preferred the heavy barrel. The other barrels just don't offer as much given this weapon's recoil pattern. Finally, the underbarrel attachment I chose was the folding grip. Functionally equivalent to the angle grip, I did this purely because I wanted to use the 3.4x scope on this weapon in an effective manner. I find that the high first shot recoil multipliers, that is FSRM over 2x, make medium magnification scopes pretty well unusable for follow-up shots. If I were using less of a magnification, I probably would have chose the stubby grip instead, as the combination with the heavy barrel offers this weapon the best overall accuracy. But for this particular loadout, I preferred the folding grip. The AN-94 has a lot to offer for players that want to play a bit more of an accuracy-intensive standoff game. Myself, I prefer to get into CQB a lot more even when I don't know the exact disposition of enemy forces. In this case, the AN-94 will probably get me killed. If you can master the AN-94 and be disciplined with its usage cases, it's probably one of the better weapons in the game. If you can't discipline yourself or you're not particularly great at landing headshots, there's a lot of better options. One of those is the M416, a weapon I reviewed last week and my favorite weapon in Battlefield 4. It's got great accuracy, firepower, and reloading time that makes it particularly adaptable to just about every engagement range in the game. If you want a more capable DMR, the SKS is certainly a great option. It's got enough damage output to hang in close range and is on par with the AN-94 at longer ranges. But I probably wouldn't choose it over the AN-94. That's it for this episode of Yes or No. If there's something you think I missed, or if you have a particularly different take on the AN-94, please let me know in the comments below. If there's a weapon you'd like to see reviewed on the series, leave a comment indicating which weapon. As I mentioned last week, I will be continuing the series in Battlefield 1 when it releases in mid-October. Also, if you like what you saw, please be sure to force choke the like button. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, YouTube.